You ever have a project where you work through it and you think, I've thought of everything. I don't know why the factory didn't do it this way. I had a project like that a couple months ago. Turns out I wasn't quite as clever as I thought I was. Greetings fellow DIYer and welcome to my video. Several months back, I uploaded a video about the carriage lock on my PM1228. As I began to use the machine, I was horrified to discover that the factory installed DRO covered both carriage locks. Now, technically, one of the carriage locks you could kind of get into with an Allen wrench, but the other one was completely blocked out. With a quick internet search, I discovered that this is the norm. This is the way that they're all installed and the solution was to replace the socket head cap screw with a regular metric bolt so that you can get a wrench underneath to tighten the carriage locks. And I thought, that's dumb. That's not the best way to do this. And if that is how that was supposed to be done, why weren't those components installed before the DRO scale? So I thought, this is an easy fix. I can easily make this work. All I have to do is space the scale out a little further, and then I'll have access to both carriage locking nuts. And that's exactly what I did. I was proud of my modification. I put up a video. You guys may have seen it. Turns out, as I said in the open, I didn't think of everything. The problem is that spacer that spaces the scale out sometimes blocks the main locking screw. And that makes it really hard to tighten or loosen said screw. I decided that the factory carriage locks, well, I can still use them sometimes if I really need to. There has got to be a better way to lock the carriage in both axes. And that's exactly what I set out to do. And this right here is how I am now able to lock the carriage in both axes. This fits in place of the follower rest that came with my lathe. There are two factory mounting holes drilled and tapped in the carriage that I was able to bolt this in and use it to lock. The main axis is being locked with this and the cross feed axis is being locked right here. Now you may be thinking if this bolts into place where the follower rest bolts into place, that now I'm not able to use the follower rest. Well, I had that in mind when I designed this, and basically there are two things to consider. First and foremost, how often do you actually use your follower rest? If I use it half a dozen times in my lifetime, that's probably gonna be a lot. Second, the follower rest is designed to be quickly bolted into place. The way I designed this, guess what? Quickly bolted into place. This will live on my machine, I will use it on my machine, and then when the rare occasion comes where I need to use the follower rest, I can unbolt this, remove it as an assembly. I don't even have to take it apart to remove it. And while using the follower rest, if I need to lock the carriage, I can use the factory carriage locks. They're just a little harder to get to. So it's really the best of both worlds. This gives me easy access and it's simple, it's compact. And again, if I need to use that follower rest, I can. So we're gonna take this apart and take a good look at it. And I will show you all the components that are involved in this. This was not a challenging machining project and really pretty simple to do. All right, so what do we have here? So this is the main carriage locking mechanism. And if you look at that, and if you're familiar with the accessories that come with a lot of lathes, that may look familiar. That is the locking mechanism for my steady rest that came with this machine. It's designed to go under the ways, a bolt comes up through it, you tighten it down, and that's what holds your steady rest in place. You may be thinking at this point, if it came with this piece, why even mess with machining this? Why not just use this? If I have to use the steady rest, we can remove the locking mechanism, use the other locks that we already talked about that are functional, and be good to go. 
Well, I didn't want to use this piece for a couple of reasons. First and foremost, I wanted this locking mechanism to be brass. I want it to be the wear surface. As I am using this, as it is sliding underneath those ways, I didn't want the ways to wear, I wanted this locking mechanism to wear. With steel, you're more likely to wear both components. Both this component and the ways are likely to wear. Second, this is machined sloppy. This is designed to be easy to fit between the ways. You drop it in, you tighten it down, it's easy to get into position. The problem with that is because this has to slide up and down the ways as the carriage is moving when I don't have it locked, I didn't want it to get jammed, I didn't want it to get cocked, I wanted it to be a fairly tight fit, but I wanted it to be a slide fit. I didn't want it to be a slop fit. So if you compare these two, if I set this one here and this one here, you can see that this one sticks out further. There's almost an eighth inch more material because this is the actual width of the ways. And I had to round some corners to be able to position it and get it into place. But it results in a nice snug fit that allows my locking mechanism to easily slide down the ways when I'm not using it and allows it to lock into place when I am using it. So I could show you the machining of this. Well, actually I can't show you the machining of this because I didn't shoot any video of the machining of this. I do have a nice picture. The reason I didn't shoot any machining of this is, as I've said many times, I am not a machinist. This is not a machining channel. This is a problem solving channel. If you want to learn tips and techniques for machining, I'm not the guy you go to. There are so many really good machinist channels out there that can give you great information that I don't shoot a lot of actual machining. What I do show you is all the components and how I put it together, the problem solving, the package that is required to be created to make a lock. And that's what we have. So here we have a nice bolt. It fits into my locking mechanism, machined with a nice fit to hold the head so that I can tighten the nut at the top and not have to try and get underneath with a wrench. Then we have a spring. Now this spring is not required, but I did want to do it for two reasons. First and foremost, it adds a little bit of stability. It helps keep this parallel to this right here when it is installed. And that just helps eliminate the potential for it to bind. The second thing that it does is when you loosen everything, it moves this away from the underside of the ways. So now it's even less critical that this is brass because we are now not having those surfaces contacting each other. So here's my main bracket. This is a two-piece bracket. This is made out of three-eighths plate. I machined this bottom piece. I machined this top piece. I then cut a groove where the two pieces meet and did a really ugly job filling it in with weld. I'm a far better welder than what you see here but I was trying to avoid overheating this. I put down a really quick pass and I didn't want to put too much heat in it because I didn't want to warp it. Both pieces were fully machined and already ready to go. The groove here had been cut in, the holes had been drilled, and I was concerned that if I put too much heat, this would no longer sit true. And so I laid down just kind of a, a functional but ugly pass and wouldn't you know it, I warped it anyway. This top edge peeled out this way about 15 thousandths. And that created a fit interference for both the groove that the gib slides in as well as where the top of this rides up against the carriage. If I had it to do all over again, I would have roughly done all the machining, cut my groove, laid down a bead of weld that I could show you and be proud of, and then finish machined it so that the end result was something that was better. Now, normally with my projects, if I have little pockets like this, I will go back in and I will fill them with weld and you will end up with a nice clean surface. Again, I'd already warped it 15 thousandths and I didn't want to put more heat into it to make that even worse. So thankfully, this machine surface fits up against the carriage and you're not actually going to see it. I know it's there, bothers the heck out of me, 
but it does not affect the functionality of this. This is a nice solid piece and I am not worried about that weld snapping. I also cut a groove in both ends and filled that with weld so we have a nice solid connection. So this piece fits down like that and then we add a thrust washer. Now you may be wondering why I went with a thrust washer instead of just a regular washer. Well, the thrust washer eliminates friction. Basically, we're eliminating friction between the bottom of this nut and the top of this steel bracket. And what that allows me to do is to tighten this down by hand and get the perfect setting. When I tighten it down by hand, we are at that perfect zone where this carriage lock slides easily down the ways, but it's snug enough that all I have to do is give it one quarter turn and everything locks into place. With a regular washer, you almost had to go a half a turn. I really like it when it locks with less movement. Eventually, I will replace this nut with an actual lever. I don't like having to have extra tools just to lock and unlock the carriage on my lathe. So this will eventually become a handle. And again, that quarter turn will be all that is needed to lock it into place. I then have two bolts. The tips of the bolts have been rounded to fit into these pockets that I machined into my gib. You can see just slightly rounded off. And the purpose for that is to help hold the gib in place. Basically, with it in place right here, as the carriage is sliding back and forth, I didn't want friction between my gib and the carriage to cause this gib to wander. And so by machining those pockets, it allows these bolts to hold it into place. This is the basic design. This is the basic setup. It's uh, all set to go. I just need to install it on the lathe where it will live permanently unless I need to remove it to run the follower rest. I will show you the install and I will show you how it works. So here's the carriage on the lathe. Here is the factory mounting holes for the follower rest. Simply designed to bolt into place just like that. Again, if I need to use this, I will remove the locking mechanism. But again, how often am I really going to use this? Second thing, this is the bolt that came with the follower rest. And this is the mounting bolt that I'm actually using for my lock. The issue with this bolt is obviously it's longer than this bolt and the thickness from here down to the way plus the 3 8 plate that, that my locking mechanism is, is not thick enough to keep this from bottoming out in your way. Ask me how I know. Right there, there's a nice circle in my way. When I tightened this down, it was just barely too long and it dug into the way. I was so mad at myself when I saw that. So if you end up building a locking mechanism like this, don't use the factory follower rest bolts to mount this in place unless you go with something thicker than 3 8 Second thing of note, there's a ball oiler right there. I had to notch this bracket to clear the ball oiler. So just something to keep in mind. Basically, I didn't want this locking mechanism to be just like the DRO scale and reduce my access to the features of this machine. All right, so we have it assembled. We're gonna loosen this up just to make the install a little easier. The install is really pretty simple. I get it down into place, I get it under the ways, I pull it up into place, I slide it in place. Give myself just a little bit of room, slide my gib into place. We can now install the two main mounting bolts and hold everything right where I want it. Just like that, we have my locking mechanism. Now it needs a little adjustment. As I said before, if I tighten this nut by hand to the point where I can't turn it any further, we end up sucking the brass piece up into place, but I still have enough slack that I can easily move the carriage. It's really a perfect setting. Now I take my wrench, come in here, 
one quarter turn. It doesn't move at all. I actually fired up the DRO and rocked it back and forth and basically did not get any movement. When it comes time to unlock it, we simply put the wrench there, loosen it up, and now I can move the carriage. Same techniques and concepts apply to this axis where I am locking the carriage. I can come in here and tighten these bolts down by hand and still be able to easily move the carriage. Now with two of them, I have the option, if I really want it secure, I can tighten them both. But I also set it up in such a way so that this front one is the main one. So if I go ahead and give both of these about a quarter turn, not a whole lot, we are now locked into place and moving this wheel does not cause it to go. I have easy access, very happy with the way this all came together. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to put them down in the comments and I would love to get back to you. If you like what you've seen, please click like. If you'd like to see more, please subscribe. Thanks for watching.